So let's talk about designing NFAs, or non-deterministic finite automata. So before we get into designing some specific NFAs, I thought I would show you a technique. So a technique that you couldn't do with a DFA, at least in this exact way. I, have, I, don't, I don't want to say too many things. Is that there's a technique that we can use for designing NFAs. I like to think about it as being uh, producing more guesses. So this is a helpful technique we can use to exploit non-determinism. So, so let's consider the following NFA. Yeah, geez, it'll look a little funky, I know, right? <laughs> um, consider the following NFA. So it's going to be similar to the one in one of our earlier examples. It's going to have three states. It's going to have three states. Q2 is going to be the final state. I'm just going to get rid of the loop on Q2. Otherwise, it's the exact same as our previous NFA in our previous lesson. So if I have three states like this, notice that if I get to Q2, if I put read any more symbols after that, I'm toast, right? <laughs> that thread is done. So a common technique that you can use with NFAs is that you can use self loops akin to the one I have here on Q0 to produce more guesses. Another way of looking at this is thinking about it as spawning another thread, for which if one thread fails, it's killed, you can use another guess to spawn another thread, for which it might successfully reach Q2 upon reading the input. So, so notice, that state Q0 can be used, used to transition always. And the intuition here is that keeping a thread, if we're thinking about this in terms of parallel threads, Keeping a thread alive. Now, if, if you're wondering why this matters, is that you can imagine, upon making a certain set of guesses, again to the first intuition I gave you about perfect guessing, is imagine you want to have the guess that actually gets you to Q2 and accepts, if it exists. If, for example, I haven't read enough of the input to get me here, I want to make sure that I supply another opportunity for a walk to occur in terms of execution from wherever the failing point could be to the final state or a final state. So in this case, you could imagine like I'm just keep allowing us to keep allowing a binary string to occur over here. Meaning that ever I run into a situation for which I start reading a 1, I can have one of the states goes to Q1, and then it reads a 0, it can go, that thread can go over to Q2. However, if, for example, I read another symbol, I could still have one sitting over here if there was another one read to go back over here and try it again. Do you see what I mean? So it allows you to produce more guesses. This is a nice technique you can use when you're designing NFAs. So I have a question for you, by the way. What language does this NFA accept then? So think about it very carefully. I thought I would start off with this one because it's similar to one of the ones we've seen before. So if you think about it intuitively, remember, like I said, it keeps allowing us to take in a 0 or a 1, and it stays in Q0. And if ever it sees a 1, it 
allows it to be in Q0 and Q1 at the same time. But notice that it, as soon as it reads any more symbols after this, it's done. It, 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 won't, it won't be able to do anything over here, but you're still alive over there, right? That's something you can always guarantee when you look at this. So if you're not convinced by this, try an input string and notice that ev every stage of the computation, one of the states is always going to be Q0. But the point is, is what does this guy do? Is this NFA, so this NFA accepts all binary strings that do what? So remember, if it reads a one, then a zero, then it reads anything else, it's done. It, it won't, it, 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 as in it will kill that thread. However, if you read the whole input and after reading a one and then a zero, and you're here, you accept. Well, it means that that string has to end with one, then zero, right? So it accepts all binary strings that end with one zero. So this is our first example of an NFA here. Is Notice here, the whole trick here is just to allow us to keep producing guesses. If ever we make a mistake, we get another go at it. It's a very, very generous NFA. <laughs> so let's do another example. So we're going to try designing, because remember, previously we had seen that DFAs were capable of like, detecting fixed length substrings. Likewise, it was also able to count occurrences of some constant size of, say, a certain symbol in the string. Likewise, we also even seen how this would work if we're talking about the parity of how many there, uh, by, uh, how many like ones or zeros appear in a string. In that case, we've seen the number of zeros if it was an odd number. Let's see if we could do something like this in a couple other different settings, but with an NFA. But you'll notice quite quickly that the NFA gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to making oopsies, okay? <laughs> like I said, it allows us to have another go around. So let us design an NFA that accepts all binary strings, all binary strings, all binary strings where, where the third last position of the string of the string is a zero. So just to clarify what I mean by this, let's consider a couple of example strings. So just as a quick example, uh, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. So this is the last position. This is the second last position. This is the third last position. There's a zero in here, so it should accept this string. Um, how about one, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. That's the last position, second last position, third last. It's a zero, so accept. How about this one? One, uh, let's go, let's do something fun here. Let's go, zero, zero. Should I accept this string? Yes or no? Which one, should it accept or reject zero, zero? Well, it doesn't have a third last position at all, so you should reject it. There's simply not enough symbols in that case. How about, uh, how about zero, one, zero, zero? Well, this certainly has enough symbols in it. Well, let's look, last position, second last position, third last position is a one. No, we should reject that one. So let's pick up the idea we had about producing more guesses to help us design a NFA in this case. Well, let's start off with what we had before in our previous example. We know how to make it so it ends with a certain target string. 
but we don't really care about everything else except for the fact that the third last position is a zero. So let's use a technique that we used with DFAs, but we're going to combine that with the idea we had about producing more guesses. So the first natural place for us to start is consider all input symbols on a state called Q0. This will allow us, if ever, we fail to get a pattern for which we encounter a zero, because remember, the third last position has to be a zero. Then anything else that follows, as long as there's two more symbols, or there's zero or one, we're okay, right? But suppose that we fail to meet that pattern, because remember, the pattern looks like this. So it's any number of zeros and ones, then you see a zero, and then you have a zero or a one, and a zero or a one, right? But anything after that, not allowed, not allowed. That's the form of an, a string that gets accepted. So this will allow us to keep this part. So we can keep this part as long as we have this, because this will allow us to keep producing guesses. So next, we need to allow it to see the zero. Then, akin to when we were trying to detect a substring, we're going to have a pathway that permits us to read the last couple of symbols. But now, because we are allowed to have it, we're, we're, keep in mind, this thing is allowed to be in multiple states. However, at this stage, if you get the Q1, as long as you read either a 0 or a 1, we're OK, right? As long as you read a 0 or 1, you're OK. So I'm going to make Q3 the final state. So there's just one final state, just Q3. And bam, there we go. So notice that this will allow us to read the first part of the string, 0. Then we have two spots here. How about if I wanted to ensure there was like, if I wanted to allow the, like, because this is one thing you have to be very careful about. What would happen if I put a self loop over here that had 0 and 1 in it? What would happen? Well, now you have to be a bit careful because if it successfully sees a 0, we've just essentially just allowed it as long as there exists a zero, a zero or one, or a zero or one, as long as it only has that form, any other string works, right? So if ever I wanted to just have it where it's a string, where it's a zero, then another zero or one, then another zero or one, uh, this will work to satisfy such a requirement, right? But that's not what I want, right? I need to get the specific target form. So do you see how with an NFA, if I want to detect a substring or a pattern, this idea that we had before where we kind of come up with a pathway works quite nicely. Again, just now we can take advantage of the non-determinism to keep spawning more threads or more guesses. So if ever we botch it, we have another go around until we've finished reading the string. But yeah, so that's another example there. Let's take that idea now, let's extend it even further. So let's consider when we have an alphabet with three symbols in it, C, A, and T, cat. Like Miss Kitty, <laughs> she's a cat. So suppose I give me cat, we're going to, so let us design NFA, NFA that accepts that accepts any string. And when I say any string, I'm referring to any string over this alphabet. Any string that includes that includes cat, so the phrase cat or tac which is it backwards. So let's, let's take all of the ideas we've seen up to this point for designing NFA. And let's try approaching this. Well, let's think about it. Let's start off with a start state of Q0. Now, 
notice that now we have two possible patterns to look for. And remember, like I said before, if I want to make more guesses, I can just include a self-loop to help me ensure that at least one thread stays alive. So I'm going to do this over all of the input symbols, or our alphabet here, so that if ever I botch finding one of these patterns, we're still OK. So let's consider TAC first. So if I want to detect TAC, does anybody have any ideas of how I would detect TAC? Well, I know TAC would look like this, right? We've seen this technique before when we were studying DFAs, right? Where I would just have a pattern that's encoded in the pathway like this. Right? This should, this should cut it, right? Actually, yeah, I'll, I'll refer to them like this. However, it says, it says that it accepts any string that includes TAC. So keep in mind, as long as TAC appears in the string, we're OK, right? However, this means that TAC would be at the end of the string. We need to allow, akin to our previous discussion, we need to allow it to read more symbols, any symbols. And so far, now we have it where it will detect if the word TAC appears in, or phrase, or key phrase, appears in the input string. How about cat? What can I do with, with this machine now? What can I do? Well, it's very nice because notice that if, if remember, it's cat or TAC. It doesn't have to have cat and TAC in it, just cat or TAC. So notice quite quickly that, okay, well, that means I can make another pathway where I can have, say, Q4, Q5, and send it over to Q3 again, like this. So can you see how I can easily generalize this if I wanted to put more key phrases? So this is one versatility that you get with an NFA. So it gives you a lot of choice, design choice, over, over this by the fact that we can keep spawning more guesses, right, if ever we botch it. So we have opportunity to botch reading the string uh, to get that good, that perfect guess. Now remember, in an NFA, the intuition is that if it can reach here, that it can and it will follow that path of execution. However, when you're designing and thinking about it, you might want to think about kind of like what I just described before. So notice here now, I can allow there to be as many symbols as I like at the beginning. Because remember, as long as Q0 stays alive, if we botch detecting one of these two patterns and we don't get over here yet, this will allow us to make another opportunity to try it out. As long as it appears in the string, we're OK. So, this is actually how you can design an NFA that does such a thing.